all about the most powerful orcs in the Lord of the Rings. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry and this is Marvelous Videos. The Lord of the Rings contains a host of evil, nasty villains. Sauron was the wretchedest of the wretched, and he also possessed a slew of strong lackeys. Like any good tyrant, Sauron needed his mindless throwaway minions, which is where the orcs come in. You show strength! You've just earned your company. Orcs were vicious, sadistic, and terrible creatures that despised everyone and everything. They obeyed Sauron out of terror, but they also relished the opportunity to slaughter and prey on the other inhabitants of Middle-earth. I thought I killed you, Nuruk. Or a die so easy, maggot! Orcs were ferocious combatants with almost no major weaknesses. Because Tolkien rewrote their original tale several times, the creation of orcs is a source of contention in the fandom. They were formerly made out of underground rocks and slime. They were warped elves next, and afterwards corrupted men. Whatever explanation you believe, orcs were formed in the recesses of history. <laughs> They detested the sun because they were forged by evil for evil's sake. As a result, they remained in the shadows, which is a classic literary trope. Here we will discuss the most powerful of these vessels of evil. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now let's begin. Azog. Azog had been an orc chieftain of Moria who killed Thror and commenced the War of the Orcs and Dwarves. He was murdered during the Battle of Azanulbizar by Dain II Ironfoot, and his son Bolg succeeded him. The name Azog has no known meaning or origin. The name is most likely from the Black Speech, while Magol is also a possibility. It's been noticed that the name is akin to Manish and to the Adonaic word Zagar, which means sword, in which case Azog may mean warrior or something similar. Azog's origins are unknown, but he was considered the most powerful orc in the Northern Kingdoms. The average lifetime of an orc is uncertain. However, he might have been one among those banished by Sauron to Moria in TA 2480. Bolg is the only son of his who we know about. Gandalf mentions Azog briefly in The Hobbit, telling Thorin that his grandpa Thror was brutally murdered in the mining sites of Moria by Azog, who he referred to as a goblin, upon which Thorin responds, confirming Gandalf's statement. Incidentally, this is the only time J.R.R. Tolkien makes reference to Azog as the goblin. Everywhere else in The Lord of the Rings, he refers to him as a great orc. The pale orc. Azog made his debut in the Chronicles during the period of TA 2790 as a result of King Thrall's determination to explore and maybe rediscover the vanished land of Khazad-dûm within the towering ruins of which Azog resided. He reached the Great Gates, but Azog, with his orcs, seized and murdered him, branding his head with the letters Azog hewn into it. He hurled the head at Nar, who stood outside with a money bag with a few dimes of little worth, threatening that no further dwarf beggars would be let inside Moria. When when Thrall's successor Thrain learned of this, he got enraged and assembled a troop of dwarves to exact revenge on Azog. So the War of the Orcs and Dwarves started, with the dwarves hunting Azog and numerous battles waged beneath the ground. After nine years of fighting, the momentous Battle of Azanulbizar had been waged just outside Moria's walls. King Thrain II, with his son Thorin, was fighting in the battle, and at the climax, Azog came through the inner entrance with his guards, while Nine was tired and half-blind with fury. He swung as forcefully as he could, but Azog dodged, and Nine slipped, splintering his weapon on the ground. When he evaded the dwarf's strike, the orc struck him in the leg, causing him to stumble, at which time Azog tried to thrust and decapitate him, only succeeding in breaking Nine's neck due to the powerful armor he was wearing. At this moment, Azog became aware of his fleeing soldiers and returned inside. Dine the second pursued him up the stairs and slaughtered him. Azog's head was placed on a pole, with the exact coin-filled purse on his lips that he had thrown at Nar after killing Thrawn nine years ago. Azog's subterranean dominions in the north were substantially diminished during the war and passed on to his son, Bolg, who ruled them for over 150 years until his death in the Battle of Five Armies during TA 2941. Oh, 
In Peter Jackson's The Hobbit film trilogy, Azog survives the Battle of Azul Nubizar, sacrificing his arm to Thorin rather than his head to Dine, and so lives to become one of the series' three primary adversaries, the other two being Sauron and Smaug. Out of vengeance, he chases and assaults Thorin as well as his company on their route to the Lonely Mountain. He's also depicted as the biggest orc to ever roam Middle-earth, vastly outweighing any of his clan and surpassed only by his child Bolg in size. Azog is the orc leader of Moria in The Hobbit An Unexpected Journey, often known as the Defiler or the Pale Orc. He's also supposed to have been a Gundabad orc. When Balin relates the tale of the Battle of Azanubazar, the flashback shows Azog defeating and beheading King Thror, which drives the king's son Thrain insane with sorrow, but infuriates the king's grandchild, Thorin Oakenshield. Thorin is pummeled by Azog till the dwarf prince takes a broken oak limb and wields it as a guard against the orc's weapon. Thorin snatches a fallen dwarf's blade and chops his arm off as Azog slams the weapon down using his left arm. Azog is transported back to Moria by his companion orcs, even as the dwarfs regroup and push back the rest of his forces, but at considerable cost to themselves. Thorin believes Azog perished from his wounds, but he has lived and schemes against the dwarves once more, this time seeking vengeance on Thorin Oakenshield for chopping off his arm, in contradiction to the death caused by the hands of Dain Ironfoot. Later in the movie, Yasneg, an orc captain, laments his incompetence at killing the dwarves to Azog and is tossed to the wargs with a band of orcs camped on Weathertop. Azog embarks on the quest for Thorin and his company, now having sworn a pledge to break Durin's line. He mounts a massive white warg and commands a gang of hunter orcs. In addition, he's seen with a prosthetic forearm and hand in replacement of his severed left arm. Azog and his troop of warg riders ultimately catch up to Thorin and his company, who have been compelled to climb up trees to evade the wargs in the film's climactic finale. On the other hand, the wargs knock down the trees, stranding the group on a tree dangling over a precipice. Thorin cannot contain his rage any longer and lunges towards Azog, who smashes him with his mace effortlessly. Azog then commands one of his orc minions to fetch him Thorin's skull, but the injured Dwarf King is rescued by Bilbo Baggins. Azog pursues Bilbo as the Great Eagles save Thorin and his company. The Eagles kill the vast majority of the Wargs and Orgs, but Azog, the White Warg, and a handful of the Orc Riders survive. Throughout The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, Azog pursues Thorin's retribution, tracing the Dwarves to Bjorn's dwelling. He's not able to harm them, however, since Bjorn is patrolling the territory in his bear state. Bolg appears and informs his father that the Master has summoned him, upon which he grudgingly complies. When Azog arrives at Dol Guldur, door, it's established that he's working alongside Sauron, the Dark Lord, who has been disguised as the Necromancer. Given the leadership of his troops, Azog wants Thorin's death, to which Sauron responds that everyone would die anyhow. Frustrated, he assigns the responsibility of chasing the dwarves to his son, Bolg. Later in the film, when Gandalf examines Dol Guldur, he realizes that the ruins are the result of a concealing spell cast by the Necromancer. Azog jumps out and strikes him back in a sneak attack, taunting the wizard for his late intervention and unveiling the armies he's assembled. He prepares to murder him, however Gandalf wields his staff to hold the defiler at a distance, despite his repeated efforts. Gandalf flees well before Sauron can capture him. Azog leads the army to the Lonely Mountain, ready to fulfill his pledge in the approaching war with Middle-earth. In The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, Azog advances towards the Lonely Mountain with his orc army, which consists primarily of Moria orcs, warg riders, and numerous monstrous trolls and ogres, when Bolg arrives and informs him that Legolas and Toriel ambushed him. Azog asks Bolg if he murdered the elves, but Bolg says no, much to his dad's chagrin. Azog then orders Bolg to travel to Gundabad and lead an additional orc force to the battle. Azog controls this army in the Battle of the Five Armies by utilizing signal flags which notify a legion when to strike. He initially uses wereworms to excavate a path for his army to go unnoticed up the mountain. The army's initial lines are swiftly stopped by Dine Ironfoot and his dwarfs, who are vastly outnumbered. The dwarves build a shield wall as the orcs advance, towering like a spiked barrier against the oncoming orcs. Elven swordsmen leap from within the dwarven shield wall onto the first row of orcs, who are mainly armed with swords and axes. The combined elf-dwarf onslaught proves devastating, and the orcs are brought to a standstill. Thranduil orders his archers to shower arrows on the orcs, as Bard and the Lake men remain in reserve, ready to strike if necessary. 
Azog sees this and orders the other portion of his army, mostly pike-wielding orcs, to assault the city. Bard and his troops flee to Dale. The orcs use trebuchets transported by trolls and operated by goblins to breach the city's defenses. Then they dispatch a sapper troll to breach the walls, and orcs, combat trolls, and half-trolls stream into the city, slaughtering everyone in their path. Bard retaliates with his army, briefly halting Azog's assault, but only for a short time. Thranduil, Gandalf and the majority of the elven army follow, but many are killed along the road, and Thranduil too is dismounted and surrounded by attackers. Dynsteed is also killed beneath the mountain, and many dwarves begin withdrawing. Azog's army approaches Dale and confines the dwarves. However, Azog orders his army to wait so that his combat trolls can advance. Then he orders his soldiers to destroy Durin's sons. Thorin and company emerge from the mountain and attack the orcs. Already though, Bolg, the Wargs, Bats and several goblin mercenaries had gotten ahead of the larger Gundabad force. The Bats attack the dwarves and the men, killing scores. Thranduil tries to flee, but he's stopped by Legolas, who is with Toriel. Thorin, Dwalin, Fili and Kili ride mountain goats after Azog on Ravenhill, but when they arrive, Azog grabs Fili and smashes the dwarf through his body with his sword arm. Outraged, Thorin chases the orc, but Azog surprises him and shrieking fiercely, takes on Thorin with his severed blade arm and mace versus Thorin's sword. During this final battle with Azog, Thorin rapidly recovers and gains the upper hand by hurling the orc over a hill. Azog dispatches his troops to kill Thorin, but he defeats them all. Azog suddenly reappears, this time armed with a massive flail and his blade arm. Simultaneously, the great eagles, headed by Radagast and joined by Bjorn, emerge and rain down on the approaching orc horde, totally destroying it. The eagles next swoop down and kill the bats. Thorin throws Azog's own flail into his arms as the battle proceeds, causing the fractured ice under the orc's feet to give way, attempting to drown him. Thorin chases Azog's body as it drifts away, and he falls into the orc's trap. Azog smashes Thorin's foot with his arm blade and bursts through the ice, striking Thorin in the chest. He grins evilly and triumphantly, momentarily letting down his guard. Thorin then knifes the defiler in the chest with orc wrist, despite being held down. He then turns over and attacks him once more, this time pushing Orcrist right through all of the icy surface, anchoring Azog to the ice. The Defiler dies a few moments later while staring into the gaze of his greatest nemesis. But despite his triumph, Thorin dies from the chest wound inflicted by his enemy. Azog, as portrayed in the Hobbit movie trilogy, is a very skilled and adept fighter with a harsh combat technique that involves keeping his space from his enemy and employing psychological warfare to enrage his opponent. He boasts super strength, speed and endurance, allowing him to overcome and destroy whole teams of opponents at once. After losing an arm to Thorin Oakenshield, he was forced to do less fighting and lead his pack from a watchful distance. In his second fight with Thorin, he's a cruel, brutal, idealistic and determined leader of his battalion's warg riders, being very clever and displaying tactical brilliance when he traps Thorin and his company in the trees. During The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, Azog was even able to hit Gandalf with a stroke of his mace, despite the fact that he was finally incapacitated by Gandalf's staff, allowing the latter to momentarily free from the Necromancer, or Sauron. Azog is a skilled warg rider, able to relentlessly chase Thorin and company in the first film and briefly shadow them in the second. He's a fantastic hunter with nearly infinite resolve. He demonstrates his military talents in The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, by leading the orcs from atop a mountain, delivering army movements and instructions with fatal effect. He also battles Thorin tactically, sending a force of orcs to assassinate or tire him, then fighting him again. Thorin overwhelms him and seems to drown him, but Azog pretends to die and when Thorin gets close enough, he stabs the dwarf. He had also expected Thorin's arrival to rescue Kili and had easily ambushed him, catching him by surprise. Gothmog Gothmog was the witch lieutenant king from Minas Morgul during the Third Age, most famously featured during the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Gothmog was only mentioned once in The Lord of the Rings, after the death of his master at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. In reaction to the sudden appearance of the Rohirrim, he started calling his army's reserve out from Osgiliath and into the main battle, bringing Easterlings, Southrons, Variags, as well as Trollmen into the fray. The novels don't say anything about Gothmog's race. 
Tolkien scholars suggest that he was one of the following, a man, in which scenario he was most likely a black Numenorean, much like Mouth of Sauron, one of the Nazgul, but Tolkien never officially specifies his identity among the Nazgul. He might also be an Orc or an Uruk, despite his Sindarin title, or perhaps a Baldog, a corrupted Maya in Orc skin. Gothmog is presented as a malformed Moranan Orc general, with a damaged left arm in The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, and his role is lengthened beyond his brief mention in the novels. Though his identity isn't revealed in the movie, official merchandising reveals that it's supposed to be the same Gothmog featured in the novel. He's initially seen leading the orcs as they bridge the Anduin River into the west side of Osgiliath that is still under men's control, and commands the first shot fired during the Battle of Osgiliath. Following Faramir's withdrawal, a second legion penetrates the kingdom from Minas Morgul across the bridge erected by the orcs, who dominated the city's eastern side. Gondor's forces departed, leaving behind their casualties, one of whom being Madril, a gravely injured commander of the Ithilian Rangers, who Gothmog murders with a spear. When the Witch King arrives from Minas Morgul, he orders Gothmog to attack Minas Tirith with all the troops at his disposal. When Faramir goes out on horseback with a small company of Gondor knights to recover the stronghold, Gothmog instructs his shooters to fire a barrage from the wreckage of Osgiliath, killing all the knights except Faramir. When his armies assemble at the Pelennor Fields, he commands the heads of the fallen men in Osgiliath to be fired from the catapults in order to strike dread in the hearts of Gondor's warriors and destroy their confidence. Gothmog then takes command of the primary ground operations, which range from slingshots to siege towers. When the city's doors refuse to budge, he orders Grond to be summoned forth to batter them down. Gothmog orders his forces to stand motionless as the guards of Gondor begin hurling rubble at the invaders with trebuchets. When a massive piece of debris is thrown directly at Gothmog, he waits until the final second. He then sidesteps to dodge it by roughly a foot, causing him to ridicule his adversaries by then spitting on it. His subordinates are good Uritz, the siege commander with a skeleton head on his helmet, and Murgash, who is a black Uruk. In the film, Gothmog is considered dead when the Rohirrim charge, since he's last seen attempting to pull back when the Rohirrim slaughter his troops. He survives the attack and fights Eowyn, who obtains overwhelming advantage and hurts his leg in the expanded edition. Gothmog falls in agony just as the Witch King appears on the battlefield. Eowyn defeats the Witch King, but is injured as a result and flees to Merry. Gothmog awakens, enraged and wanting vengeance, and limps towards her with an axe for support. As he reaches, he throws down the axe and takes up a mace, ready to kill Eowyn. Aragorn dashes in and slices off his hand before Gimli stabs Gothmog in the torso from behind with his weapon. And Aragorn then delivers the deadly blow to his back. Lurtz. Lurtz is an original character developed for The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Lawrence Makwari, a New Zealand actor, played the role. Lurtz was the first Urukai to be produced by Saruman, and he led them into combat with The Fellowship of the Ring in Amon Hen. Lurtz appears to be the biggest Urukai, and his power is demonstrated when he smothers an orc shortly after being hatched. Boromir is killed in the book by an anonymous and unknown number of orcs, and he's reported to have been wounded by numerous arrows. He's slain in the film by Lurtz, who fires at him three times. After a brief skirmish, Aragorn intervenes and stabs Lurtz before removing his head. Jackson, as well as his co-writers, may have gotten the name Lurtz from Tolkien's orcish tongue, notably the name Lugburz. Lurtz's identity is never mentioned in the film, and is only recognisable through the end credits. Lurtz was half-blind because Lawrence Macquarie had difficulty seeing anything with his mask on. Saruman directed the orcs from Isengard to begin construction of the castle, as the wizard desired to raise an army to lead Sauron's war against the West. Lurtz became the first of these vast number of orc soldiers to be produced, and upon his birth, he choked the pitmaster who supervised his ascent to death, frightening the rest of the goblins and piquing Saruman's interest. Lurtz was summoned to Saruman's main hall inside the Tower of Orthanc for a session with the sorcerer, who revealed the real essence of the former orc's forefathers before stating that the fighting uruk were a polished version. Saruman, eager to put the warrior to the test, asked Lurtz where his allegiance lay upon which the commander responded that it lay with the fallen sorcerer and the Dark Lord. Saruman, pleased, placed Lurtz in the leadership of the uruk troops tasked with capturing the hobbits and transporting them to Isengard in accordance with their master Sauron's orders. While he was upset initially that he had to come back with the hostages alive and unharmed, he immediately forgot about it once the wizard informed him that he had to murder the others. Lurtz and his subordinate Ugluck, 
another dedicated follower of Sauron and Saruman, headed the Urukai scouts on a quest for the Fellowship of the Ring, which led them into the forest of Lorien and then to Amon Hen, where the commander prepared an attack on the group. Lurtz issued instructions to locate the halflings, as several Uruks fought Aragorn and other men in the Fellowship. The orcs mistook Peregrine Took and Meriadoc Brandybuck for Samwise Gamgee and Frodo Baggins and pursued them. Boromir, the Gondorian captain, took it upon himself to protect the halflings from the ferocious warriors of Isengard and managed to take down multiple Urukai before being shot three times by Lurtz's poison arrows. Weakened he collapsed, making Merry and Pippin vulnerable. Lurtz approached Boromir carefully, his troops grabbing Merry and Pippin. Before Lurtz could fire the final arrow into Boromir's heart, Aragorn stepped in, tackled Lurtz to the ground, and the two began a vicious struggle. Lurtz's extraordinary ferocity and ruthlessness appeared to equal Aragorn's ability and cunning during the battle. Lurtz threw his shield towards Aragorn, confining him to a tree, yet Aragorn escaped and fought with him. Aragorn outmatched Lurtz and he stabbed him in the leg with a dagger, just for Lurtz to take it out, suck the blood off it, and throw it back at him. Aragorn charged, deflecting the blade with his sword. He cut Lurtz's right hand and struck him in the abdomen during a lengthy sword fight. After being stabbed by Aragorn's sword, Lurtz gripped Aragorn's blade and dragged the sword further into his stomach, experiencing no pain because Saruman explains in the film that uruk don't really feel pain, while bringing Aragorn nearer in a last attempt to kill him. Before Lurtz could use his teeth to murder the ranger, Aragorn rips his sword from the Uruk commander's chest and beheads him, eventually killing him. Bolg Bolg was Azog of Moria's son, succeeding him after he was killed by Dain II Ironfoot at the conflict of Azanulbizar, the final showdown of the War of the Orcs and Dwarves during TA 2799. He had relocated to the old sanctuary of Mount Gundabad when the realm of Angmar was deserted, and he appears to have governed the Misty Mountains goblins from their capital there throughout the Battle of the Five Armies. Bolg led the North Goblins for around 150 years and commanded the troops of Goblins, Wargs as well as Bats during the Battle of the Five Armies, in which he was accompanied by his bodyguards. He was crushed in the fight by the powerful Bjorn, who was avenging the death of Thorin Oakenshield. The origin of the word Bolg is unknown. The term Bolg is described as meaning powerful in the word list for Magol, one of Tolkien's invented languages, as recounted in the volume The History of the Hobbit. Magol seems to be based on Hungarian, as Tolkien appears to have begun work on it about the time he was creating The Hobbit, if not before. The History of the Hobbit also mentions Bolg as a term with an uncertain origin in the language of the Iverni, early Irish people recorded in Ptolemy's Geography of the Second Century. Celtic traditions concerning the fear Bolg among the Tuatha de Danann's foes would support this. Bolg was portrayed by Lawrence Makawari in The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, and then by John Tuohy in The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, in Peter Jackson's The Hobbit film trilogy. He's shown as a massive, pale orc dressed in armor and bones. Bolg makes many appearances in The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. In the new film, he's very similar to his parent, Azog the Defiler. As previously stated, Azog is called to Dol Guldur to head Sauron's orc army. While there, Azog sends his son, Bolg, to pursue Thorin and his companions in his place. Bolg follows Thorin and his company through Mirkwood, where he and his gang of orcs assault the wood elves while the dwarves flee in barrels. Bolg and his pack chase the dwarves and pursue their trail, which leads them to Lake Town. With his orcs, Bolg comes into Lake Town after dark and ambushes Bard's family in pursuit of the dwarves, yet they only find four. When they strike, they are confronted by Legolas and Toriel, who are on the hunt for the orcs. He pursues Legolas, and then the two begin a battle during which Legolas uses Orcrist, Thorin's weapon. Bolg pulls back from the combat and speeds away atop his wag along a dock while Legolas is preoccupied with the other orcs. He's then chased by Legolas riding a horse. Later, Bolg informs his father that he was assaulted by Legolas, and Azog shouts at him since the elf prince lived and would now dispatch an army to kill the orcs. Azog then orders Bolg to proceed to Mount Gundabad and assemble a second orc army as well as a swarm of bats for battle. Legolas and Toriel accompany Bolg to Gundabad before departing to alert the others. Bolg subsequently comes with his new army to help Azog at Ravenhill. Bolg knocks Bilbo unconscious with his weapon before attacking Toriel and severely wounding her. 
Killy comes and takes on the orc, but Bolg appears to be sturdier and stabs Killy in the chest with the hilt of his mace, killing the dwarf. Toriel, enraged, throws Bolg off the mountain, dragging him down with her. Legolas suddenly spots him and the two fight furiously, ending with Legolas murdering Bolg by plunging a blade through his brain. The massive Gundabad orc then tumbles to the ground and is smashed by an enormous boulder. Bolg, like Azog, is a bloodthirsty, cynical, relentless and cruel warrior. He's a sadist to the core, having no qualms about slaughtering the men of Lake Town and even savouring Killy's death. He's also psychotic and remorseless, as evidenced by his pitiless command to strike Lake Town. He's nonetheless a very bright leader and tactician. Bolg is mysterious and powerful with great willpower and outstanding tactical abilities. He demonstrates the same pitilessness as his military parent and is almost unbelievably driven and ruthless. Despite this, he maintains a solid bond with Azog, as Bolg is fiercely loyal to his father and wishes to make him happy. As Azog's second in command in the Gundabad Orc Pack, Bolg is a skilled leader. He's a highly skilled hand-to-hand -hand warrior and swordsman, as seen in his final duel with Legolas. He's also an expert warg rider. Unlike Azog's favoured warg riding method which emphasises strikes with significant momentum, his fighting style emphasises lightning agility and speed as well as skills in martial arts and leveraging the surroundings against his opponent. His fighting ability is subsequently demonstrated when he's given command of the orc gangs, while Azog remains to face Gandalf. Bolg has an incredible pain tolerance as seen by his refusal to be knocked unconscious or even bleed when Legolas repeatedly bangs his head against the wood pillar. Adar. The third episode of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, seems to see the TV series begin to stretch its narrative, introducing several protagonists who the Lord of the Rings enthusiasts will be very well versed with, such as Isildur and Elendil, while delving deeper into new characters created specifically for the series, such as Holbrand, the Hidden King of the Southlands, though there's speculation he'll eventually turn out to be the Witch King of Angmar. The present narrative, set in future Mordor's Southlands, is a comparably original fabrication, with Arondir, the Sylvan Elf, a warrior who has spent years as part of the garrison maintaining guard over Morgoth's old haunts. It also features what looks to be the show's first original villain, a mystery monster with the same name as the episode. Adar is his name. The ultimate big bad in the Rings of Power is, of course, Sauron himself, but there are a lot of narrative territories to cover from where the series now is, and when that fabled final coalition of men and elves joins together to fight him and the mighty one ring he wears. Sauron is yet to be seen in the show. While the majority of fans have believed his shape-shifting form is lurking in plain sight, there's no solid confirmation of this as yet. That implies that the show will require a few other nasty villains for our champions to fight while the Dark Lord raises his army, and Adar appears to be one of them. Though we don't see Adar until the episode's conclusion, his presence looms large throughout the majority of the Rings of Power's third segment. Orcs chant his name, and everyone appears to agree that he's a badass. In fact, the Orcs' cult-like loyalty to this mystery man is so strong that Arondir and a number of elves imprisoned in Adar's encampment publicly speculate that his name is another term for Sauron. He's busy directing the development of a massive network of hidden underground tunnels across the Southlands, eliminating all human communities on his route. We may not know him officially, but it seems pretty evident that he's a bad guy on some sort of dubious mission that hasn't yet been disclosed. Arondir is hauled before Adar after a failed escape attempt, but our only glance at this character is extremely clouded. During the few moments we see Adar's face, we can't identify what he looks like, but only that he's fair with long dark hair. We discover very early into the episode that while the subterranean tunnel network is primarily utilised to enable orcs to roam Middle-earth during the day, it also aids the orcs in their hunt for something. We have no idea yet what it is. Almost everything seems plausible, which is an aspect of what makes the plotline interesting. The fact that we have no clue what Adar seeks or who he is, is wonderfully refreshing in many respects. We'll find out if Adar is the right hand of Sauron directly or simply another menace in due course, but it's evident that he has his own goal, and that's what makes his narrative worth watching. Baldog Baldog in Noldorin means Torment Slayer, derived from the words Ball, meaning torment, and Dog, meaning warrior. 
Baldog had been an orc captain of the Angband army during the First Age, who is only mentioned in the initial lay of Lathian and doesn't feature in the Silmarillion legends. Later versions made it a title for Maiar, who took on the form of an orc. According to the lays of Beleriand, Baldog was a mighty commander of orcs who was sent by Morgoth to lead them on a major expedition into Doriath in order to kidnap Luthien, child of King Thingol and the Maya queen Melian. Baldog marched his troops south through Dorthonian's highlands and the magical woodland of Tower New Fuin along the Orc's Road of Haste to the Pass of Anach. The Orc host approached Doriath's boundary where deep darkness met magical mists at the Girdle of Melian, slightly east of the Mindeb River. Thingol musters his full power alongside his two prominent captains, Beleg and Mablung, to confront the dreadful danger posed by Baldog's invasion. He guides the force of Sindarin Elves past Doriath's North March. Thingol and Baldog engage in single combat in the thick of the conflict. Thingol battled with his dwarf-forged blade Aranruth, and Baldog battled with a notable iron spear which was subsequently utilised by Mablung during the hunting of the wolf. Thingol kills Baldog and the orc host is beaten. The survivors are exterminated by being forced into Tar Nufuin. The Battle of North March was the culmination of Morgoth's assault against Doriath, following his triumphs in the Dagor Bragalach during the Battle of Sudden Flame, which was the fourth of Beleriand's great battles that broke the Siege of Angband. Elements of Baldog's raid are dispersed across several versions of passages in Christopher Tolkien's The Lays of Beleriand. Nevertheless, none of the plot lines featuring Baldog are in significant conflict with the ultimate text of Quenta Silmarillion. Baldog's leadership of a swarm of orcs with fearsome ambitions suggests that he must have been many levels above the majority of orc captains and fighters, like Balkmeg or Orcabal, who were both from a separate century. It's also thought in some traditions that Baldog was of an inferior rank of the Maiar perverted by Morgoth and acquired the appearance of an orc, rather than being an elf who became maimed, which was the original root of orcs in general. Grishnak. Grishnak appears as a minor enemy in The Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers film adaptation. He seems to be an orc commander who works for Sauron. Stephen Ewer portrayed him. Grishnak was an older spelling of Grishnach, used by Tolkien. Grishnak seems to be an orc chieftain of Barad-dûr within Mordor under Sauron's authority, and he despises Saruman. Sauron dispatched Grishnak to seize Meriadoc and Peregrin and transport them to Mordor but he discovered that Saruman had sent Ugluk, a rival orc leader, to transport the hobbits to Isengard. Grishnak was furious and he set out to murder Ugluk and take the hobbits' belongings for himself. Grishnak began wondering whether Ugluk could legitimately command this expedition as the orcs arrived at the borders of Fangorn Forest. He also expressed trust in Sauron and promised to deal with the traitor Saruman. Grishnak was said to have a lovely sound for an orc, yet he was filled with more malice than the rest. Grishnak was also rather astute for an orc. He deduced that the hobbits held the ring, and because the Isengarders had just been kept in the dark, Sauron may have intimated to his commanders what he was pursuing. Grishnak took the hobbits out of the campsite to harass them for possession of the ring and attempted to flee with it, but was stabbed by a rider when he tried to escape. In the film, he lives and pursues Merry and Pippin to the Fangorn Forest, where he's killed by Treebeard stomping on him. What is it? What do you smell? Man flesh. Ugluk, the leader of the Urukai. In the War of the Ring, Ugluk had been an Uruk in Saruman's service. He kidnapped Merry and Pippin and then tried to take them to Isengard. Ugluk, being an Uruk, was bigger and more powerful than the other orcs, and he didn't like the sun. Ugluk wore the sign of Saruman's white hand. Nathaniel Lees played Ugluk in The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. On the 26th of February, TA 3019, Ugluk led the orc company that ambushed the Fellowship of the Ring on the hills of Amon hen and kidnapped Merry and Pippin. Ugluk, with his other Isengarders, was a servant of Saruman the Wizard, who he referred to as the Wise and admired for providing him human flesh to eat. But not every one of his companions was from Isengard. The troop also included a contingent of Mordor orcs headed by Grishnak, as well as a detachment of Moria Northerners. Ugluk's instructions had been to murder everyone in the Fellowship, excluding the halflings who had to be sent to Isengard for Saruman, live, caught and unspoiled, as soon as possible. Grishnak's orders were the same, with the exception that his target was going to be Lugburz or Barad-dûr, and ultimately Sauron. 
The Northerners seemed to have no instructions. They had arrived from the mines to exact revenge and murder before fleeing to the north. Not long after that, the hobbits were captured, and these competing goals resulted in a brief battle, in which some Mordor orcs and some Moria orcs were killed. Ugluck triumphed and was able to enforce his way. His orc company fled west, leaving Grishnak's party behind. On the eve of the 26th of February, Ugluck learned that a solitary Rohan horseman had been observed but not apprehended. Knowing that the Rohirrim would soon pursue them, he administered medicine to Merry's wound and forced fluids down the hobbits' throats. He then broke their leg shackles, allowing them to run with the rest. When the Northerners protested to his decision to keep running until daybreak, Ugluck vowed that they would travel with him behind them, and he ran at the back to keep an eye on everyone. On the 28th of February, despite Ugluck's quick speed, an aored of riding men began to approach the orcs. Near the Entwash, the majority of the Northerners split off and fled to the Misty Mountains. At the same time, Grishnak arrived with a swarm of Mordor orcs. Due to the threat posed by the horsemen, the two orc companies banded together and raced for the forest. They managed to catch up to the northerners, who were forced to rejoin Ugluck's command. Despite their best efforts, the orcs, now totaling 200, found themselves surrounded only three furlongs from the forest's eaves. The suffocated orcs began to complain about Ugluck until he told them that reinforcements commanded by an orc called Mauher were on their way. As the night progressed, the riders launched an attack on the orcs. Ugluck rallied his Isengarders to halt the onslaught, giving Grishnak the chance to flee with the two hobbits. Grishnak was killed, and the hobbits managed to run just as Mauher attempted, but was unsuccessful in breaking the encirclement. As their Aored struck daybreak on the 29th of February, Merry and Pippin retreated into the woods. Ugluck almost burst forward through the riders along with a group of men in the next fight, but he was driven to the bay on the very outskirts of the forest and murdered by Aomer during a hand-to-hand -hand blade duel. Ugluck perished, unaware that the two hobbits he had abducted didn't have the One Ring. Gandalf subsequently pointed out that Ugluck's efforts will unknowingly contribute to Saruman's demise. Golfimble. Before the company departs Bag End in Peter Jackson's movie The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, Bilbo is told by Gandalf the story of how Bullroarer took Fort Golfimble. Golfimble had been a goblin chieftain from Mount Gram, a goblin stronghold in the Ettenmoors, and had led an attack on the Shire. Bandobras Bullroarer took, defeated and decapitated him in the Battle of Greenfields. The way in which he died at the hands of Bullroarer is claimed to have influenced the sport of golf. Fimble means great in Old Norse. According to Robert Foster, the relationship with golf, or the English word, shows that the name is either fictional or a translation of Westron. However, it's hinted that certain historical fabrication may be at play. Golfimble commanded a force of goblins across Mount Gram inside the Misty Mountains to the Shire's north farthing in TA 2747. This assault of the Northern Shire took place during Arasuil's rule as chieftain of the Dúnedain, and the goblins commanded by Golfimble were only the most western band of goblins to leave the Misty Mountains. Golfimble was only able to make it all the way to the Shire because the rangers were engaged in several fights with goblins at the time, stopping them from occupying all of Eriador. A band of hobbits headed by Bullroarer Took destroyed the goblin host. During the battle, Bullroarer stormed the lines of the Mount Gram goblins and, using a wooden weapon, smashed Golfimble's skull entirely off, sending it hurtling a hundred yards into the air and into a rabbit hole, thereby winning the war. Golfimble unknowingly gave his title to the sport of golf, which had been developed as a result of Took's deeds during the fight. The Hobbit was an attempt to upgrade to the epic level of The Lord of the Rings with the 1960 version. J.R.R. Tolkien was using the title Finn Golfin for the leader of the goblins early in The Hobbit, which also featured the term golf for the pun about the birth of the game, albeit not as strongly as in Golfimble. Tolkien wanted to modify the title to Golfimble in the unfinished 1960 reworking of the narrative. According to John D. Rateliff, this was either due to a further development of Tolkien's linguistics or or simply because he was discarding the golf joke illusion. For Edda.
Conclusion. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, has a lot riding on it. Prime Video invested a lot of money in the show, and legions of people have worked on it. However, executive producer Lindsay Webber says the ideal position is up to the viewer when it comes to the Orcs. Her aim is that people would discover new dimensions in themselves, that they will be excited and scared, and that they will feel something along the road, she added. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time time.